focusing on a sport slash a good family car that's been there for 20 long years. The Evolution Series. Here we go! Action. The fact that I did a bit of research uh, before coming today is that uh, Evolution in the 80s was actually coming to no race points. So eventually they started to come up with the sedan, yeah? Yeah, I mean, they initially in 70s and 80s, they wanted to like, you know, enter the uh, motorsports. Yeah. So they decided rally. Uh -huh. So then initially there's like two classes, like class A and the class B. So they uh, raced in the class B for a few years. Then um, for some safety reasons, the class B was banned. Right. Then so, um, like they wanted to move to the class A. I think I heard about the topples in the sedan that happened pretty often. Yeah, yeah. so that's the main reason. Uh -huh. But the problem in the class A, you need to sell like 2,500 cars to enter. Right. So that is the birth of the evolution. Uh -huh. So the, the, the funny fact is like, you know, they built 2,500 cars right. as a stage one uh -huh. and uh, they started selling them in Japan. It took only three days to sell the entire lot. Right, so also I uh, heard something in, within the period like Sedan and Evolution that the Gallon came up for a while as well. Yeah, that's in the class B as uh -huh. I remember. Like uh, in the class B what they did was they put a massive engine in the Gallant and then after the class B was banned, uh, they had another production car ready to race. Right. So I mean they can't scrap the car. What uh -huh. they did was uh, got the engine and whatever internals uh -huh. and put it in the small Lancer body. Right, so basically it was like uh, when all the other cars like Toyota and Mazda and all that brought their cars up, they had to keep up with something and then it was the gallon for a while in class B. Yeah. And then eventually they couldn't hold on for too long. No, the other reason then... is the Gallant is a pretty long car. Uh -huh. And uh, Subaru did, uh, they are racing in the Legacy. Right. It's also a pretty long car. Uh -huh. But the problem is the tracks are very narrow. Mm -hmm. So Gallant and uh, the Legacy struggle quite a bit in the uh, shorter Early roads. stages. Yeah, because the roads are so narrow. Uh -huh. Like the European cars are so small, these are like hatchbacks. So they were like... Managed really to get through easily. Yeah. And they had a better skid rate exactly. than uh, yeah. those than in those longer cars like right, right. Leg Legacy and uh, Gallant is like pretty long. Uh -huh. Let's get with the bonnet then. I want to check what's. Uh, you can see this, this one. This is like aluminium bonnet. Uh -huh. Like weight is very less. Uh, yeah. These ducts are for cooling. Uh -huh. Like uh, <clears throat> like they spend quite a bit of money and um, research and development for like you know these bonnets and fenders right. and all. Right. Like most of the uh, difference between evolution four, five, six are the aerodynamics. Uh -huh. Like uh, four and five and six, uh, the like engine is quite a bit the same, mm -hmm. but uh, aerodynamics are quite a bit of different. Mm -hmm. I mean, other than that, like. You look at four engine, five, six, whatever, it's like exactly the same engine. Mm -hmm. So, explaining the parts, like these uh, these suspensions are like aftermarket, these are not uh, right, stock yes. ones. The advantage of these suspensions, uh -huh. you can, um, if you can zoom in towards here, you can see the soft and hard, S and H. Right. You, if you turn towards the S side, that means a uh, soft, soft side, that is hard for the normal hard. road. Yeah, soft for the road use, hard uh -huh. for the track Tracker. use. Right. So, and on the day, like you know, you can enjoy on the road or track. Sure, or, sure, sure, sure. I mean, it's so like, uh, I would like to hear more about the aftermarket and then uh, the standard uh, differences of the parts that you usually connect to these. Yeah, like the strut, the strut by is pretty much standard. Uh -huh. Other than that, uh, the battery and the air filter are relocated. Right. Like generally, the original air filter is somewhere here and uh -huh. the battery is here. But the person who used the car in Japan, he like gonna change it. Right. I mean, right. Uh, and uh, normally. Air comes through the bonnet, through this duct, goes to the air intake. Mm -hmm. But in this thing, the air comes from the front. There's a small duct, if you can see. Oh yeah, uh, the, the red, red color one. point. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The duct is there. Mm -hmm. You can uh, zoom to the duct, and it's here. Mm -hmm. So through the duct, there's a pipe that's coming up to here. Right. From there, when the car is moving, the air travels to here. Mm -hmm. From the air intake, it goes straight through the aluminum piping to the turbo. Right, right, so, right. So that is the one modification that the Japanese person done to this car. Sure, sure. Other than that, the battery is relocated. It's not a... Um, yeah, like you mentioned. It's not anything, like either the blow fail is something 
different. This is like the new blow fan. The oil cash tank is there. It's it's just a safety thing. I mean, nothing. Once much again, to talk. placing the duct is a personal wish, right? You customize it according. Not to... me. Like uh, the person who uses the car in Japan has done it. Right. Like and um, the car came as it is. So I mean, I don't. No, but it is possible for you to personally customize into a certain other spot as well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the evolutions you can like these cars have like you know somewhat close to 280 bhp. Like you know, there are cars that do 1000. 1500 horsepower right. like you know these are like um, I mean, modifiable to the extreme length says a lot like, by my knowledge like, on evos are pretty bad but yeah. uh, thank you like these are like yeah. minor compared to the uh -huh. uh, what people do in like you know european countries australia japan right. like you know even singapore out of curiosity uh, uh you predict the or oh, the japan user as a race driver or just a normal uh, daily commuter who goes to work and think i think that? i think a daily commuter Sounds Be like that. Yeah, because like uh, I mean, there are minor modifications. Like the compete is modified. Other than that, these modifications, but there's nothing much to talk about. Not, like the not to a level of a serious uh, no, Evo. Not at all. Right. As a road legal car, what are the changes that you need to do when you switch to the track usually? Like this car, there's absolutely nothing you had to do. Like I mean, you, you, all you need to do is pump gas and drive on the track. <laughs> But the I mean, if you want to like do a good run, you can change the tires to like semi slicks or slicks, and then do minor tweaks. I mean, other than that, there's nothing you need to do. Like uh, I mean, that's the beauty of the evolution. Right. Depending on the slick or the semi slick, the performance change alters accordingly. Yeah. If if the tarmac is really good, if you're switching to like uh, slicks, that will give you like you know more grip and um, better time. Uh -huh. But uh, I mean, like we did today, like I mean, we can use road tires to do some laps. Right. right. <laughs>